Hey, what's going on people? I hope you guys are doing good. Today, we're gonna to be talking about some awesome security tips and tricks for the Galaxy S22 Ultra. That way you can keep all your personal information safe and secure and you don't have to worry about it getting out there. Let's do this. So the first tip and trick that I have for you is, wait a minute, what is that? Is that someone's phone? It is, it's someone's S22 Ultra. But look, check it out. If I go to the lock screen, they might have it set up to where they do. Call 555-878-3232 if lost. That's a really cool feature. Let me show you how to do it. So if you wanna add a little message on your lock screen in case you misplace your phone, that way if you're traveling with somebody, you can leave their phone number on your lock screen. That way they can contact that person in case you lose your phone. Go into your settings, go under lock screen, and then right here you have the option for contact information. That's where you can add a little message and then provide the uh, secondary phone number that way someone can call that number if you lose your phone. Really useful, especially if you go on vacation. Okay, so in case you guys can't tell, I probably need to get some coffee, which brings me to my second tip, and that's secure Wi-Fi. A lot of us use open networks or public networks like at coffee shops, and that leaves you open to vulnerabilities. Luckily, the S22 Ultra has secure Wi-Fi or pretty much a built-in VPN. Let me show you how to use it. Okay, I got some coffee. Let's go ahead and sit down, and let me tell you about secure Wi-Fi. All right, so first things first, if I go into my Wi-Fi settings, you can see I'm connected to a public network. I'm connected to the Axum Guest Network, and this is an unsecure network, but if I go into my quick toggles, go all the way to the last page, tap on the plus symbol, locate secure Wi-Fi, drag it down, I now have access to secure Wi-Fi immediately just using the quick toggles. Now you can also access secure Wi-Fi by going into your Wi-Fi settings, and then going down and you'll see secure Wi-Fi right here on the bottom. You can tap it and it will bring you to the main secure Wi-Fi page. All I have to do is just tap protect and boom, now it's turned on and pretty much it acts as a VPN and you get 1,024 megabytes per month, but you can subscribe and pay a monthly fee if you want more. So it's just really nice to have a built-in VPN like this. And like I said, I can quickly toggle it on and off just by using the quick toggle here. So I can toggle it off and then toggle it on. So that way whenever I'm on a public network, I can make sure that all my information is being protected with the built-in VPN. I really like that. Let me know what you think of secure Wi-Fi. Since we're on the topic of Wi-Fi, let me show you how you can share your Wi-Fi network for the times where you have company over at your house and you don't want them knowing your Wi-Fi password. So what you could do is you're gonna go into your Wi-Fi settings where your Wi-Fi networks are. So I have Axum Guest saved right here. We'll say that's my home network and I wanna share it with somebody else. I can tap on the cog wheel and then tap on QR code in the bottom left corner, pull out my other phone here, which will act as like the guest phone. You can see it scans the QR code and when I tap join network, it will automatically prompt me to join the network and they can join it and I don't have to give them my Wi-Fi password just a way to keep your you know, passwords a little bit more secure. I think that's kind of cool. So there's a few other ways that you can share your Wi-Fi network, like quick share if you're sharing from Samsung to Samsung device or Galaxy to Galaxy, and then nearby share, which I'm not too familiar with, but it seems to work okay. I think it's from Android to Android. You can also save this screen as an image in your gallery so you can quickly access it on the fly. But again, if you have a lot of photos in your gallery, it's probably just easier to pull it up the way I showed you. And you can also text this image to different friends or family members, or you can share it on social. Not sure you would wanna do that, but a lot of options here for sharing your Wi-Fi network, and I think it's pretty cool to see this, and a lot of people may have forgotten that it's there. Man, crypto has been looking really bad lately. I don't know when you're watching this video, but at the time that I made this video, it's just not looking too good. But that reminds me, Samsung has a really cool blockchain wallet that links with your crypto and you can protect your digital assets. Let me show you where it's at. To access the Samsung blockchain key store or wallet, you can do this one of two ways. The first way is to go in your settings, tap on the little search symbol, do a search for blockchain, and you'll see it pop up right there. The other way that you can do this is from your main settings page. So this is the main settings page. Scroll down until you get to biometrics and security. Tap on that, scroll down, and you'll see Samsung blockchain key store. Tapping on that will pull up the Samsung blockchain key store and you can see what you can do inside of here. You can safe and secure, you can store private keys safely in a secure area. You can easily sign transactions and you can protect virtual assets such as NFTs. 
I don't have mine set up completely because even if I did, I wouldn't show you this page because it has my personal information in it. But that's a quick way that you can, you know, use the Samsung blockchain key store for crypto, NFTs, or other virtual assets. Really cool if you're big into this. Another security tip and trick that I have for you is to monitor your microphone and camera access. You can actually completely stop it. Let me show you how to do that. So you can go into your quick toggles, go all the way to the last page, tap on the plus symbol, and then look for camera and microphone access. I've already added camera access down here, so I'm just gonna go ahead and add microphone access, drag it down, tap done, and now I can quickly toggle on and off camera access and microphone access by toggling it off and on. So if I'm on a website and I notice that it's getting access to my camera or microphone, I can quickly go into my quick toggles and toggle that off and then it will no longer have access to those features. So it's definitely a great security feature that you should monitor and use because, you know, with and all these different sites, you know, they're gathering personal information of your likes and dislikes through these two features right here. And you can kind of prevent it a little bit just by toggling them on and off and monitoring it. Just like camera and microphone access, you can also monitor whenever an app accesses your clipboard, whether that means text, a photo that you copied, or other information that is stored in your clipboard. Let me show you how you can monitor that. To monitor your clipboard access, you're gonna go into your settings, scroll down until you see privacy, and then scroll down, you'll see alert when clipboard is accessed. Just toggle that on, and now you can get an alert whenever an app accesses the text, images, or other content that you've copied inside of your clipboard. Really useful and a great way to, you know, just keep an eye on your privacy and things like that. Speaking of all the security talk, camera access, microphone access, you can also use secure folder to lock down files like pictures, videos, even apps. Let me show you how to access secure folder. So you're gonna go into your settings, you can go under biometrics and security or just do a search for a secure folder and then it'll pop up. Scroll down, tap on secure folder, and these are all your settings. If you haven't set up secure folder, it does take a minute for it to actually configure and set everything up. But once you do, you can lock down different things. You can view all the apps that are being locked down inside a secure folder. You can also go into your gallery. So we'll go ahead and pull up my gallery real quick. Find a picture like this one and then I can tap on the three little dots and I can move to secure folder. So that's a way to move files like pictures, videos, and audio files over to secure folder. If I go into my app drawer here and then swipe over, you can see I now have an option for secure folder so I can pull that up and it will quickly take me to all the settings. These are the different ways to lock it down. So you can lock down secure folder with a pattern, a pin, password, and fingerprints. And the only way someone can get into your secure folder is by one of these. You can also adjust when it locks down. So if I go into my secure folder settings back into the main settings here, I can do auto lock. And every time I leave the app, it will lock or when the screen turns off every five minutes, every 10 minutes, every 30 minutes. So you can adjust all of this information or settings right here. Another way to access your secure folder settings is in quick toggles. So if I go all the way over, tap on the plus symbol, then locate secure folder up here, which it is right here. I can drag it down, add it, tap done, and then now I can quickly toggle secure folder on and off. So if I toggle it off and then go into my app drawer, you can see secure folder is gone. And then if I go back in and then turn it on, go back into my app drawer, you can see it's right there. So that's how you can hide the secure folder icon altogether. Really cool feature, underrated, definitely check it out. Like I said, you can lock down photos, you can lock down videos, audio, and apps. Really useful. So the next tip or trick that I have for you is Samsung Pass. Now Samsung Pass is like the umbrella for secure folder and Samsung Pay. It's a great feature and there's a lot of cool things that you can do inside of Samsung Pass like store your passwords, digital car keys, IDs, and much more. Let me show you how to access it. Like I said, Samsung Pass kind of ties into Samsung Pay and secure folder a little bit and it's just really useful. So to access it, go into your settings. You can do a search for Samsung Pass. You can see it's right here. You can access it through your Samsung account or biometrics and security. I'm gonna go ahead and tap on biometrics and security and you can see it's right here. If I tap on it, you can see it's secured by my fingerprint, but you can also use your pin or other passwords. We'll go ahead and scan my fingerprint. 
it will bring me into Samsung Pass and once inside, I can add my digital car key, I can add my IDs and passwords for apps, websites, or manually add different things. And I also have my private info like credit cards, addresses, and I can add notes inside of here really useful feature and Samsung has been adding on to this and making it a little bit more functional and trying to blend Samsung Pay with Samsung Pass much more to create one app that does everything. But right now you do have a little bit of a separation here, but it's still super useful and something that you should check out. When it comes to backing up your photos and videos, there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. And I definitely recommend that you do it because it keeps your memories safe and secure. And it gives you just a backup in case something happens to your phone. You can do this with Google, you could do it with Amazon, Dropbox, or if you're a Microsoft Office user, you can use OneDrive, which is already like integrated into Samsung's OS and there's nothing else that you have to do except turn it on. Let me show you how to do it. The first thing you need to do is download OneDrive and log into your Microsoft account. Then go into your main settings, go under your Samsung account right up here at the top, tap on Samsung Cloud, and you'll see the option right up here at the top. Tap on that, you can view all your settings, you can toggle it on. You can see my Microsoft and Samsung accounts are not linked yet, but if I tap on that, it will bring me over to the website where I can connect and link everything. Once that's connected, it will automatically start backing up and you can sync using Wi-Fi only or you can use your mobile data. So if you have unlimited data, you could definitely go that route and you could choose all the albums that you want to sync. Really useful for Microsoft Office users. Definitely check this out if you are. Oh God, what the hell is that? Man, I really don't feel good after getting bit by whatever that was. Oh. Luckily, I have my emergency contact information and my medical info stored in my phone, so if I black out, the authorities or the emergency uh, people have access to all that stuff. If you want to add your medical information or an emergency contact, go into your settings, scroll down until you see safety and emergency, tap on that. And once you're inside, you can add your medical info right here, and then tap on the little pencil icon in the top right. You can add your medical conditions allergies, current medications, blood type, and any other emergency info. And then right below that, you can add an emergency contact from your contact list. Really useful, especially if you go like on vacation or if you're in an area that you know, you're unfamiliar with and you don't have a lot of people around you, this could save your life. Oh my God, it is hot out here. I'm stranded, I've been lost for hours. My phone's almost dead, I need some water, water. Water. Oh, it's empty. This is where emergency mode's really gonna save my butt. So if you wanna access emergency mode, go into your main settings, scroll down until you get to safety and emergency, tap on that. And right here is emergency mode. You can toggle it on and off. And what it does is it pretty much kills all of the excess features and gives you the bare minimal, like your phone, messaging, maybe a little bit of uh, your browser, flashlights, and also your emergency alerts and it also alerts your emergency contact of your location or your last location. It pretty much puts your phone in the ultra power saving mode and it's gonna conserve a lot of power. It's really, really good, especially if you're like stranded, broke down on the side of the road and um, you're worried about your phone dying, you don't have access to a charger, toggle this on and there you go. Or you can erase your emergency contact and just use emergency mode as like a ultra power saving mode if you get down to like five or 10% and you just want to go a little bit further for messaging and phone calls. Ugh, I just threw away our lunch. Wait a minute, where's my S22 Ultra? I can't, can I borrow your phone real quick? So let's see, findmymobile.samsung.com. All right, let me log in. All right, let's see where, it says it's right here. It says it's moving with us. Wait, yep. you know what? It's in my pocket the whole time. So Find My Mobile is a really useful feature and something that you should enable as soon as you get your Galaxy S22 Ultra. To turn it on, go into your settings, tap on your Samsung account at the top, scroll down until you see Find My Mobile, and then tap on that, toggle that on and set it up. You can remote unlock your phone. You can send last location and you can also do offline finding. 
All you have to do is go to findmymobile.samsung.com to track your phone if you ever misplace it. And there's a lot of things that you can do with it. Really powerful, very, very useful, and extremely important to enable as soon as you get your phone. So make sure you do that. So there you go. That was several tips and tricks to help you feel a little bit safer when using your S22 Ultra. These tips and tricks help you stay safe when you're traveling or medically. Let me know if you found them useful. If you did, please consider giving this video a thumbs up. If you have anything to add to this video, go ahead and comment down below. Subscribe for more videos just like this, and I will see you beautiful people in the next video.